All right, guys, go to Boy 32 here, check it out. So we're sitting out here at the little pond by the Mifflin County Sportsman's Association, and I am surrounded by mosquitoes. Not sure why in the world I decided to come out here and do it right here, but I thought, hey, that scenery behind me was pretty cool and it's pretty quiet. All right, the purpose of this video, I wanted to go over my equipment that I'm going to be taking out to uh, this new uh, Sniper's Unknown Challenge uh, because a lot of this stuff is new to me. I had to shoot three gun competition. But one, we're shooting one with a new rifle and a new pistol, a new belt setup, and a bunch of cool stuff. So let's talk about this primarily. Uh, first thing let's do, and everybody wants me to do this. I love it when a politician goes, the overwhelmingly majority of the country wants you to do this. All right, so this is uh, not the six millimeter arc. Uh, I have taken that six millimeter arc out and ran it through as much as I possibly could do, but the unfortunate part about this is I'm running out of time. The, uh, the advantage of using that six millimeter was the fact that you could carry longer, uh, more resistant to wind uh, and drift and things of that nature, but we're gonna be shooting uh, the 77 grain uh, Sierra Match King with this guy right here. This is the Elite build. This is uh, basically the same lower I was using with the Arc, but a different upper. Now let's go ahead and go through the details, and I'm using this thing this is the really right stuff uh head right here and this is the nrl uh, what do you call this thing tripod uh this is a very nice tripod this is uh these have got 40 millimeter tubes carbon fiber but off the kit cuff okay so from top to bottom because this is going to be all the details we're running the primary arms. This is their 6 to 30 with the Athena reticle. Now, why am I not using, say, for instance, the Apollo reticle or some other reticle, the BDC reticle? Well, uh, those reticles work really, really good if you're shooting at a target that is like uh, 18 inches or half size IPSC. Um, this, I don't know what size targets we're going to be shooting at. So, uh, one of the things is I need a good reticle. I need something with a great turret returnability. And this guy right here is just Johnny on the spot when it comes to that. Plus the clarity. And I love the Athena reticle. One, also because it has uh, ranging brackets in there. If I know the size of the targets, then I'm not going to have anything, any problems ranging something out to 1,000 yards. Uh, okay, so that, you know, guys, I, I work with Dimitri and uh, Primary Arms, so that's going to be the one that I'm going to go with. All right, so as far as the, uh, and what we'll do also is I will put a full build list on my website, kb32tac.com, because they're not going to let me do any kind of links. Another reason why you'll never see the link to kb32tac.com down there. Uh, we are running the scope in a spur offset mount. This is a 20 MOA built in to it. Uh, I want to have as much ability to dial in out past a thousand yards. Not that I'm going to have to do that with this particular scope, but uh, with this cartridge, I don't think I'm, I'm good to about 850 with this thing with the out going uh, subsonic on it. But in any case, we're, uh, but the spur mount is primarily the um, the epitome of mounts, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, these guys make the best mounts on the market. My uh, secondary backup, and I do have another scope. I got the 6 to 24 uh, with the Athena reticle and the GLX model. And uh, my backup on that one is the, um, what do you call it? The American Fence, which makes a great scope mount. On that, a lot of people have asked me about the throw lever. This is made by Vendetta. Vendetta Precision. I did an actual little video, short video on that. Uh, so that was good to see. Now, on the back side of this thing, we are running with the uh, Send It LR, which looks like my battery's already dead on it. That's great. Thought it was supposed to have uh, automatic off. Okay, so anyway, the Send It LR is on there, and uh, We'll have to go ahead and see how to change batteries out on that guy, but this is the latest and greatest, and it is set up with the mount that mounts directly to the spur uh, scope mount. So you're saving a lot of, of room. One thing I failed to mention, though, was the spur mount right here also has a bubble level in it. Uh, as it relates to uh, 5.56 five, shooting in 800 yards, is being perfectly level going to be something that's, that's that crucial? Uh, it could be. It really could be. So at the point, 
you really need to make sure that you're doing everything. And I guess that's the point of this whole series is to try and make sure that we're doing everything that we possibly can do to give our best, our all. Uh, somebody made a comment when I said something about owing it to the manufacturers. Well, not only do I owe it to the manufacturers, but I owe it to myself. On the top rail here, we're running uh, the full length JP top rail. And then this is a dope card series. And I've got it set way out here, guys, because I have my uh, reading, is why I'm reading, reading glasses. I want this thing set out as far as I can get it so that I can wear uh, some regular vision uh, through this thing. And then also I can see what my dope card is for 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800 yards. The nice thing is, is I can fold this thing up and I'll show you, roll it over and tuck it right underneath the uh, scope right there on the bell. And uh, it's hardly noticeable. All right. So from front to back, from here all the way back, let's go ahead and do this. I'm running, this is the Ultradyne Apollo S. Uh, this is probably one of the best muzzle brakes that I'm aware of, uh, especially for 5.56. Five, they also make the uh, uh, regular Apollo, Apollo S for 6.5 Creedmoor, and then they have the new Apollo LR, which I was running on that 6mm arc. Uh, excellent, excellent uh, muzzle brake. We are going to be doing a 6.5 Creedmoor build in the near future. Okay, one of the things I didn't have mounted on the rifle yet are these Ultradyne American uh, Ingenuity C2 offset sight systems. Now, why am I going to run a set of offsets? You never know. Period. Okay, so on this rifle, uh, you've seen me shoot. This is a .38 MOA uh, barrel. Uh, this thing, this is the rifle that we almost hit that golf ball at at 600 yards, but this is a 20 inch proof research barrel, one and eight twist. Uh, I'm a big fan of the one and eight twist. Gas block is a JP with a JP gas rod. This is a Mark III handguard from JP, the upper and the lower set. Now, the lower parts kit is just a regular Strike Industries, and inside I'm running the Trigger Tech Diamond Trigger. This guy is set up for right about, I want to say, probably a pound and a half. Uh, and the reason being is that when I'm using this tripod and I am in on a target, I just need to be able to breathe, and when I'm coming across the target, it needs to go off when I want it to. Uh, in the back, we got the Veltor with the uh, neoprene cheek weld on there. I love that. It just gives a little extra cushion. And this is one of the cool things, the Fad Defense. This is their uh, grip. We sold a lot of these things for these guys. They actually sold out. All right, so one of the things we will talk about uh, in a specific detailed video are the tripods. Why use a tripod? This one is set up with a really right stuff uh, head on it right here, the QD head. Uh, this is the NRL, this is their, their RT90C, and this thing is uh, capable of holding up to 90 pounds. I can actually use this and sit on it. Now, one of the things I am going to do is I've got Ranger bands around here somewhere. And I'm going to wrap some Ranger bands around these clamps because they are not sprung. They're, you have to press them in and out, and I want it to be able to spring in. So it's really nice. You're able to go ahead and put the rifle in there. We're able to use it uh, in a standing position or in a sitting position, and it gives us a lot of detail. This uh, tripod only weighs uh, six pounds. All right, go ahead. And one of the things that we're going to do, we're going to run the... Uh, what do you call this thing? The Atlas, BT Atlas. One of the guys mentioned to me that I had the the, uh, le the little throw lever on this thing on the wrong side. You're absolutely correct. Uh, I had this thing switched around and with the barrier stop, you can't, uh, this thing will not move. So what I did was I was able to extend the barrier stop out on the end. And the only problem is, is on occasion, I'm going to have to lock it in and then pull it out and rotate that up so that it's out of the way. But uh, the BT Atlas on the 419 barrier stop, this thing is actually really nice. Um, I'm able to take that off. All right, so one of the other things that we'll do is if we're shooting on top of a tank trap, another barrier, we want to use a soft bag. And I actually have two different bags here. This is the tacky bag. This is the one that's not so tacky, but it's also set on top of a cold tack uh, frame system here with a 419 Arca Rail attachment. And that thing will slide on there just like that. And then what I can do is, say for instance, we're going to be shooting 
out the distance. I want to get my pivot point in here about as close as I can, and I can set that on top of that barrier. And what that does is it gives me a nice soft platform. I'm probably going to go with this guy because it's less full and it does have that tacky material in, but it settles the rifle right on there. And a lot of times what you want to do is find a perfect balance point to where that rifle is set up there, just like that. So you're using the rifle's weight and you can hold steady in a good position. Now, one of the things I don't have out here as far as bags are concerned is the big uh, fat bag, uh, which is our pillow bag, which I know that uh, my partner Rick is your six covered has. Now we are gonna carry this guy right here. I'll probably go ahead and just attach it onto the back of the rifle with some 550 cord. So it's always tethered on there. That pretty much covers that. Of course, I'm gonna be running uh, probably just use 20 round mags out here. Uh, I don't anticipate we're going to be doing any burn down sessions. So this will be good. Uh, all right, so that's the weapon system. Let me pull that over here. Now there are uh, several other types of uh, tripods that you might see. And we'll go over these in detail, but this is the Kofjager with their uh, really nice clamp style of uh, clamp on there. And then um, also, that is the uh, bowl type closure. And then you have this guy right here. This is set up primarily for uh, with the Arca rail attachment on top, but it has a ball turret on there, just like you see on a lot of camera stuff. So anyway, this is something that we'll talk about in the near future. Let's put this stuff aside. Okay, so here is uh, the weapon system for some handguns. So even in this whole thing, we're gonna probably, we're gonna be using our uh, handguns. Uh, this is a new rig. I'm in the process of kind of figuring out what I want, but I do know what I want is I want at least two spare mags, uh, one spare rifle mag. I do have another uh, one of these things right here. These are the G2, um, G code, G code, G code, uh, Mag magazine pouches. Uh, this is uh, a G code, and I don't know what I don't know who makes that, but this is the Series Seven um, uh, tourniquet kit right here. Probably going to go ahead and put a, a uh, first aid kit on the back side. This is a holster system uh, with the uh, G code uh, QD on it right here, as you can see. And then this is a holster system made by RT Holsters out of Rockwell. North Carolina. And inside this thing, this is, well, this is the uh, SIG X5 Legion that I uh, acquired from my good friend, uh, Mr. Uh, Pops Quest. And I got to actually do some tightening on it. That magwell's getting ready to come off of it. But uh, it is uh, topped off with a uh, loophole. Uh, what do you call this thing? The DP Pro. I can't remember the name of it. Well, anyway, it's really nice. And then I've got, uh, just for shits and giggles, because I'm going to use this same setup as kind of like my shit and get kit, I've set it up for the Surefire. Um, this is equipped with the uh, Gray Guns uh, trigger at about one and a half pounds. We're going to be shooting that here in a few minutes. Uh, one of the reasons I'm running uh, the Delta Point Pro, that's what it is, DP Pro. Uh, one of the reasons I'm running a dot, and I'll show you, is I've actually... Um, got a new pair of glasses, uh, shooting glasses, and these are the uh, Alpha frames from the good guys over there at Oakley. Uh, I bought this, these, and these off of Big Daddy Unlimited, and I will tell you, Big Daddy Unlimited, uh, I saved $200 by buying these off of those guys. There's a link on my website, kb32tac.com, uh, $9.99 a month, but I'm going to tell you something, between savings... Um, you will save in your first order enough to pay for a full year of that stuff. Speaking of Big Daddy Unlimited, let's continue talking. All right, so also we're carrying a sling because I don't know if we're going to have to sling the rifles or whatever. But these uh, alpha frames come with the, uh, the three uh, individual lenses. Uh, pretty cool stuff. And I'm really digging this color. It works real well with the uh, dot. And it also helps out with making it highlights everything. I mean, these lenses are bad to the bone. All right, so we've got the bag, taking spare mags. Uh, as far as a spare rifle, a backup rifle, I'm not gonna do that. I have enough faith in that rifle right there. Now, 
for long range shooting, uh, one of the things we are going to bring along with us uh, is a Kestrel. This is the 5700 Elite. And uh, this is, has the Elite Ballistics, um, Applied Ballistics. And then also uh, the guys from Big Daddy Unlimited haven't done a review on these things, but we are going to. These are the SIG Kilo 3000 BDX. Now they are tethered. This thing's tethered directly to uh, my Kestrel. So what happens is when you laser target, it will give you the elevation as well as your uh, firing solution in here as well as on the uh, Kestrel. So it's kind of a really cool tool. So if you have your shooting partner and I'm searching and scanning up and down, back doing my zones, uh, one of the things that we'll do is uh, I can call out the uh, distance and the data and he can write that down, put it on the dope card, either go or just call it out as we're shooting, you know, but in any case, this makes it extremely easy. Now, one of the other items that I have is this guy right here. This, believe it or not, I'm, I got to do a review on this one because uh, I've this. This is to put your binoculars on, and one of the reasons I have this big ball turret here is to use on another tripod. And I can go ahead and pop that in there like that. Let's go ahead and squeeze that in, and then these guys have that little stud right there. And you pop these guys on here like this, you tighten that down and pop it in, and then you're you're good. There's no real squeezing. And one of the things that I found is if you really crank that down, this thing will not move. They're very nice. Uh, and that's one of the key things. It's like if you're spotting for somebody, I don't anticipate we'll be dragging this out during the uh, competition, but it is nice if we need it, if we're uh, having to, you when you're doing stuff out at long, long distance, you want something to steady that off on. So if I've got my tripod here, all right, I could pop the rifle off. And if, uh, say, Rick is shooting, then I can pop this on here just like this. Put my binoculars on here, pop them in. And then while he's shooting, I can push this in and lock it in, and then that way I can get a really good read on how far that target is without the, the, uh, this thing bouncing around. Um, what else are we going to be taking with us besides the rifle, pistol, um, ball heads, turrets? Ah, a timer. I'm going to take this little timer. This is something I just bought off of Amazon. It's about six or seven bucks. But say, for instance, you've got a five minute stage, I can hit the five minute button or, and I can clamp this onto uh, my belt or my collar or any type of equipment that I have on me. But the idea is that I can sit there and count down uh, how many minutes we have. Say, for instance, we want to do two minutes in search and scan to discover targets and then we allow ourselves three minutes to engage. And that gives us whatever. Um, also, what I'm going to take with me, uh, and this will probably be on my person, is the Borka Toolkit, just because of some, if you are going to do it, it will break down. That's for sure. And I want to have the ability to fix that. I'm going to wear the SWATCOM. These are the uh, Active 8. And the reason why I'm wearing these as opposed to plugs is I really need to be able to hear what my partner's saying at all times. Poor guy. He's going to be running a suppressor. I will not. <laughs> and if you guys have ever sat beside the Apollo, uh, S when it's going off, it is a nasty, nasty, nasty break. Um, another thing that I'll be taking carrying with me are batteries, and then, uh, and I forgot to bring it when I'm going to be bringing my uh, Rush 72 uh, backpack uh, because what we have to do is for the entire day, you have to bring all your stuff with you your food, water. I've got the uh, three liter bladder in the back of it, going to fill that up with some uh, unsweet tea just to piss Rick off, and then. Uh, you know, change of underwear, socks, whatever. I need raincoat, uh, maybe even a poncho to lay down if it's muddy or whatever. Um, but your ammo, uh, magazines, all the kind of cool stuff. And then basically, that's it. Whew. All that for a little competition out to shoot targets that we don't know how far off they are.
So it's going to be fun. One of the interesting th parts about this, it's going to be held down at the Government Training Institute, which is more urban and large-scale buildings uh, than, say, for instance, if you're holding it out at the Clinton House and it's going to be all wooded. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be an interesting uh, venue to shoot at. This is, again, like I said, I think Rick and I are going down there with the attitude of having fun because that's what it's all about for us. Uh, as I know he and Ray are on the competition this upcoming weekend, uh, so they're getting a little bit more serious into it. But uh, in any case, uh, I will be continuing the testing with the 6 millimeter arc when we get back. I just ran out of time, and I have to go... Uh, this I'm taking next week off, so I'm leaving my beautiful Mifflin County Sportsman's Association, so testing is done, and we just ran out of time, and I can't go into a competition knowing that there may be some questions. But with that being said, guys, um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate in leaving those down below. Uh, I'll work on putting together a build list for this guy right here. I've had a lot of people ask about that. Um, basically, it's all JP stuff, and I've done reviews on the majority of the items that are on here. Uh, but that's it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom's not free. And I just want to say thanks to all the Patreon guys out there. Thank you so much. Uh, not a minute goes by. I don't think about you guys and thanking you for uh, helping to support the channel. Uh, that's all. Don't forget to check out the website, kb32tech.com. There's also a list of all the crap that I buy off of Amazon down below. That's it. Y'all be good. I'm out of here.